Welcome to SEC Sports Roundtable. This is your host, Shane Bailey. Thank you for joining in another podcast here. I'll get right into some introductions, then we'll get a little housekeeping out of the way and, and see what we got to talk about this week. Long time no see, Brett Young. Shane O, it is wonderful to be back. I believe I've missed, I don't know, 13 or 14 in a row, but uh, I'm back and ready to go, so thanks for having me. You're saying you've done one this year then? Uh Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember when the last one was. I felt like I was on the 25th, but maybe that's not accurate. So it's I been a while. I know it's been a long time, w- way too long. We're glad to be able to make your schedule open up enough to, to join us here. So I'm, we a, pre- I'm a busy man, Shane. But, I, you know, I try to fit y'all in. It's what happens with school and kids, isn't it? No doubt. No All doubt. Right. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Also, been missing in action a little bit, but glad to have Drew Young back in the seat. Thank you, Shane. We had to, we had to do this at... What are we, like 11.30 at night so we could get Brett in from his numerous uh, girls' softball practices and whatnot? So We're all on five-hour energy to get through this one. Is that who's sponsoring us this week? <laughs> the, yeah, sponsored by five-hour energy. <laughs> I've never had one of those. so uh, I hope it's better than Red Seal Ale. <laughs> <laughs> Another non-sponsor, is that what you're saying? <laughs> Absolutely. Is that what you're supposed to do with beer? You spo- is it like, uh, like, like liquor where the, the longer it ages, the better? I would say <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, since since Budweiser puts a born on date, do they still do that even? That since they put a born on date, do. <laughs> I don't think Red Seal did. No, Red Seal didn't have a date. I, I do know that was from at least a minimum year and a half ago in my refrigerator. Well, that was that was no offense to the Red Seal people, but that was poor. Well, we'll, we'll blame it on the age because mm-hmm. you know there's there's hardly any bad beers out there. But uh, glad to have Drew Young back in the house and back in the saddle. It, literally the house. Too. Yeah, yeah. We uh, are happy to host it here in Nolensville, Tennessee. No, we're glad to make the trek over from West Franklin to, to make this. So uh, get some housekeeping issues out of the way. We'd love for everyone to listen in and subscribe. Find us on Facebook at SCCSRT. We are also on YouTube at the same channel, SCCSRT. Uh, those are two ways to watch those and stream video. The other ways you can listen is, of course, on iTunes, on Stitcher Radio, or on the website itself at secsrt.com. Uh, that'll bring you th- bring you up there. And we're going to try to do a, a better job of getting some, some blog posts up there, too. So we're going to get some more fresh content uh, as we start rolling into the summertime. It's going to be a great opportunity for us to, to kind of break down the, the football programs that are getting ready to start action come uh, fall, and we'll probably try to get some blog posts out about that through the summer. So definitely try to keep some uh, some content there fresh and want you guys coming back. But uh, love for you to follow us on Twitter at SCCSRT and join in the conversation. Uh, get out there and tell us what you like, what you don't like about what we're doing on the podcast, what you'd like to see us talk about, uh, what you didn't like, uh, what we said uh, on our podcast so we can try to make those things because – because we try to do this for us, but we also want it to be out there that you guys are going to enjoy the podcast and listen to it. So i love for you guys to join in that community, and, and we'll, we promise that if you put something out there, uh, we will respond back out to you so we can uh, have that conversation. So those are some of the housekeeping issues, that just the, the ways to find us, and love for you to subscribe and so that you get it on an automatic basis because, like I've said before on a previous podcast, we're not doing this one every week. It's probably every week and a half as we roll into the uh, l- slowest period of, of college sports as far as most of the people in the SEC are concerned. Uh, it, it does uh, have a lot of preseason college football talk to uh, to get talking about, and we will definitely give our fair share of that. But, uh, you know, we've got all summer to do that, and we, d- we don't want to get it all done by July 1st. So, Yeah, I think that's what's tough. I mean, because right now I think the big talk in, in SEC sports is, of course you've got your baseball that's still going on, which – yeah, it's a big deal. I think it's a big deal once it gets to the to, to Omaha in the, in the College World Series. But the big thing that's about to come out are all the, the preseason magazines, you know, the Lindy's, the Athlons, the Phil Steele, all these magazines that come out. The problem with that is for print media, then, yeah, it is fresh. I mean, it's, it's a good thing to have in your hand. It makes you think about football. But they really talk about where are people going to be next year and – recruiting classes and things like that. And the tough thing is we've already talked about a lot of that, you know. Yeah. When you're talking when it's uh, – when it's – radio or blogs or anything where you're where you're you know doing it over the air it, you know it's hard to wait until until late may to, to talk about this stuff so it really is kind of the 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 dog days once once spring practice ends and you kind of got to wait seems like forever and it's another couple months two or three months until football starts 
And we'll have a couple of other things to talk about. The NBA draft will be happening in a couple of weeks. So we'll have some, you know, SEC players going in the draft. The Kentucky I'm, draft? I'm, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a few SEC players going in that draft. Um, you know, the uh, other thing that, uh, you know, I think like Athlon, I think, aren't they doing a, a countdown in May till they, they – to the end of May where they're going to kick off what they're, uh, they're counting down their preseason. I think that's what I heard. Yeah. And so they're each day they're bringing out a new uh, team as far as their counting down to the top 25 teams. And so they're, they're trying to do that that way. And we're going to do our own specials as we get through the, through the summer months, but we'll, we'll spend a few minutes here talking. I know that the two gentlemen joining me today are, are probably, um, least involved with the baseball talk. Um, the, the Tennessee Volunteers, I think, have officially been eliminated from uh, the tournament action in Hoover, Alabama, come next Tuesday. So, uh, you know, with that being said, I know you guys were excited to uh, be watching the baseball season the whole time because you had high hopes for uh, your Tennessee Volunteers baseball team. Um. I don't. <laughs> Did, I was I was being very facetious. Absolutely. Okay. I, no, couldn't, uh, I couldn't name one player off Tennessee's team. So. Is Todd Helton still there? Yeah, I think Todd, Todd Helton Jr. No, they they had a rough year. They, I, I think they had a uh, just a absolute clown coaching them for you know I guess the last four or five years and Todd Riley and I, I mean from all I know you know Serrano is is supposedly a good coach but all I can tell you is they they're right back where they were the last few years which is basically in dead last in the SEC. It's a banner year for for Tennessee's you know, in the big sports. Didn't make a bowl game, missed out on the NCAA tournament, and not even going to the SEC tournament in baseball. So, and this great year, time to be a and Tennessee this year program. they expanded that to ten teams, not eight. So, you know, there's two teams left out, and there's one from each side, the East and the West. And I do feel, uh, for some reason, I feel like they're an eleventh. So maybe if they went to an eleven team tournament, <laughs> they would have they would have made it. But uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think they are ahead of Alabama. So, uh, and, and for those who don't know how they see the first two teams, uh, the, the number one seeds in the East and West, I should say, get a bye. And then the rest of the other eight teams are seeded in ranking order. Um, they don't care which conference you're in from that point. So they go from three to ten in order of finish. And they'll play in Hoover in a double elimination tournament the first part of the week and then go to single elimination over the weekend. So... You know, I'm happy to say that the Kentucky Wildcats, as of about the time we're starting this podcast, still are in number one, uh, first place on the East. And I know that South Carolina, I don't know if South Carolina is in action tonight or not, but that's the team that, that they have to stay stay pace ahead of. And so there's three games left in the this final season counting. Well, two games Kentucky did lose tonight. Uh, so as long as they can keep the same pace with South Carolina and win two or three, or um, at least not lose any more than South Carolina wins. They they have a one game lead coming into this final three games. So uh, good luck to the Wildcats coming into the final week of this season. Uh, on the west side of things, it looks like, and I had that earlier, and my websites decided to crash on me. Uh, let's see, pull that up for us. We've got LSU. Mm, no, that's not right, is it? I know LSU's playing uh, the final series against South Carolina, so that might be right. Yeah, it is South Carolina. Let's, let's it, just go with it. I, it I'm is LSU. Surely not enough people care about college baseball to be uh, Blair Smiley's <laughs> not a happy camper well, right now. Uh, he's on the payroll, so LSU does, and they've got a three-game lead in the West, so. Uh, you know, all indications are it's going to be LSU and either South Carolina or Kentucky uh, taking that number one spot. And so next week's podcast, uh, Hoover will be over with, and I'll have some baseball guys on here to, to talk more on the uh, action because then we're starting to go into the NCAA and get into the World Series and the regionals, and that's where Drew will start to get interested, it sounds like. Yeah, and we'll, I mean, if we talk about softball, I'll talk about that all day. Tennessee, Lady Vols. Number seven national seed, hosting a regional in Knoxville, um, twenty-two and six overall record on the year. I mean, I, I don't see why we don't talk about a. Uh, I think that was the their conference record. Yeah, that's I what I said. Oh. Overall, forty-six and ten, twenty-two and six conference. <laughs> now, the first of all, it's unbelievable that you just know that that's way too few games well, for sure. women's softball. You play twenty-eight games, and I, th I think that might have been like <laughs> the the. Well, I think I, the reason I knew that was their pitcher 
their number one pitcher had like 30 wins, so I was pretty sure they had a better well, what's, record than 22 and 6. What's worse, that just with looking, I didn't know that uh, that 22 and 6 was, was not enough games for a whole full season or when I thought Babe Ruth was right-handed earlier. Oh, that, now, that's <laughs> terrible. I mean, as much as of a – and the funny thing is we're, we're talking about – you know, me and Drew's lack of baseball interest. I mean, let's be honest; it's totally due to the no, f- no. It's due to the fact that Tennessee is terrible. Oh yes, yes. I mean, that, that's the reason. I mean, I, I you know, I'm, I'm just coming from a you know a college baseball player, not to toot my own horn, but toot toot, go Skyhawks, UT Martin. <laughs> but I mean, no. I mean, I, I, I yes, I was following Tennessee baseball in the mid to late '90s when they were going to the World Series. But um, it is funny. I, I can name probably three or four. Lady Vols softball players, and I literally – I do remember Dalton Saberhagen because I think he's uh, Brett Saberhagen's son, uh, but that's the only one I can <laughs> I can go with. Yeah. So. But, um, no, that uh, that is funny, Drew, as, as much of a sports guy as you are. Uh, <laughs> I just can't believe you can't even remember seeing Babe Ruth hit. Well, I mean, I've, I've, I thought he was right-handed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't around back then, and I just – it's nor, one of those things. Nor man, Shane. I, I, I just uh, – I just don't. I mean, that's just one of those things. I just, I don't. I can't see in my head. I don't. Shane, know if I was to throw out players, just in whatever sport, I mean, don't you feel like you would know if they were right-handed or left-handed, or, I mean, if you knew the player, I mean, it's not like I picked uh, just some random guy that hit two twenty in his life. I mean, talk Babe Ruth, <laughs> Joe Drew Hedwig said, I'm pretty sure he's right-handed. You know, uh, you say that, and I'm sitting here, and I would, I, I would say yes, but. Uh, you know, one of my favorite players growing up was Mark Grace, and, and I'm hard-pressed. I'm pretty sure he was a left-handed, but if, if I had to say 100%, I, I would not be sh- certain of that. But, you know, you, he's played first base, and you generally see a lot of lefties coming from first base. And so as long as he played in the league, I was going to go left-handed there. And, you would be correct. And uh, I see your Cubs hat there. And Cubbies. So, but but it's, it's something like that that I'd, I'd – I don't think about on a regular basis. And, you know, it's one of the – they are one of the 10%. You know, 10% of the world's left-handed. True. So. Um, no, I, I have a memory sometimes that – I mean, I, I can just remember stuff that probably doesn't help me what? in life very much. I can't remember to do stuff to – Tie your my shoes. Wife yell at me. But, no, uh, I, I don't know why. Just like when you name a player, I feel like if I've seen one sports center highlight, I can just see what he's doing. And You know what number Mark Grace was? Uh, he's 17. That's unbelievable. He All also right. played at UNA. Uh, Little League over here, and, and in, didn't in, we make Nashville. a didn't we make a here? Todd Helton reference? And that's we did make a Todd Helton reference. Another seventeen, and he wore that because of uh, Mark Grace. That sounds good. He was also left-handed. So was he? Is he? He's still <laughs> playing, man. He's a uh, <laughs> Mark Grace is still left-handed too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. So Mark, Mark Grace is dead. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Breaking news on the podcast. You know, you mentioned the softball, and I had to pull it up because I, I couldn't tell you what any of them were doing. I didn't even know that Tennessee was doing so well. So, congratulations to the volunteer yeah, softball. Tennessee, well, Tennessee and Alabama are concentrating in softball. Can you name the head coach of Tennessee or co-head coaches? Well, it's uh, or, Diane and Ralph Weekly. Is that accurate? It's it's, it's the Weeklies. It's is it Ralph Karen. We- it could be. It's Weekly, Anna. Okay. <laughs> Diane. No, I don't think it's Diane. <laughs> but I don't know. Nobody else yeah. knows that either. But what what? I mean, how do you how do you have a, a baseball team like South Carolina that's got 17 wins and a softball program that's got three in the, in the SEC? I mean, you would think generally if you're you're recruiting well in one side of the of the male female side of baseball side softball, you would do pretty well on the other. I don't uh, know. I would say there's no correlation. You got Kentucky, who's dominant in basketball and their women's basketball. Besides the couple years they had a Tennessee former Tennessee assistant head coach that's a, that was the head coach they really haven't done much either so they were nationally ranked this year yeah they had a great year they're top 10 well congratulations the they had one good year <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Vanderbilt has a softball team we could probably ask Chad Caldwell if he's here but I don't think they field a softball <laughs> they, they team. don't have a softball <laughs> they team. do not they're so not if probably they, should kick them out of the conference we would know because Chad Caldwell would tweet about it every other day he Correct. tweets about any Vanderbilt sport now, speaking of that I, I had to let him know that James Franklin was going to be in Franklin today Speaking, did he? Do you know if he went to that? Did he skip school to go? Watch he actually him? was at school today, so I would say he. I, I'm sure he hated to miss it, but it sounds like he missed the appearance by yeah. Mr. Franklin. Speaking of Franklin, that I could, some website or something put a list of the top sporting. They, rank, news. they ranked every coach sporting from one news. to like one whatever one nineteen. I can't remember how many teams that there are. But uh, Derek Dooley was like number ninety nine, which is pretty bad, and, and James Franklin was number twenty five, and I. You know, I think congratulations, Franklin, for getting some hype behind the program, but 
That I ranked mean, him fifth in the SEC. Yeah, I mean, I just I'm not. Are y'all buying that? I mean, James Franklin, are y'all have y'all bought in that much to say? I can say he's done wonders for Vanderbilt, but I, I truly don't know that I. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily trade him for Dooley. I've I've got two, and I'll be honest. I I said I wouldn't last year, and, and I, right now I probably would. But I'll, I'll I'll say this: I'll give you an optimistic concept or thought about Franklin and then my pessimistic concept or thought I mean I hear more about Vanderbilt football now than I ever have I'll be honest I mean he is busting he is out recruiting he's he's getting involved in people that um that that, that Vandy normally is not involved with in recruiting but at the same time he's and y'all can check my math they've won he, he's a six and seven career head coach correct with wins against six people that he should have beat last year. I think uh, I lost a bet with Caldwell that he says I owe him five hundred dollars for on this, but he's not going to get paid. Um, they were never they were, uh, they were never underdogs in any game. Yeah, that he, the, the, the only game they were underdog was was Ole Miss. I think they were one and a half or two and a half point underdogs. So they beat teams they were supposed to beat, which maybe Mandy hadn't done that before. But it's not like you know that's the pessimistic side. No, I, I don't. I don't know how you could say he's the twenty fifth best coach in the country, but. At the same time, I I don't have a lot to stand with Derek Dooley right now because he hasn't done anything. He's just – Derek Dooley has done pretty much the same thing. The games he's supposed to win, he's won, with the exception of the Kentucky game, and the games he's supposed to lose, he, he's never come from behind to win one. Right, and we're losing 50 to nothing to good teams. So and that's another topic we'll hopefully get to at some point if y'all will steer in that direction is my thoughts on, you know, what could have been or should have been in the last – three or four years of Tennessee football if, if Phil Fulmer had never been fired. Speaking of Phil Fulmer, he got some big props this week, did he not? He is in the College Football Hall of Fame at this at this time. I think he's there right now. <laughs> well, <they're> just <laughs> camped out till December when the ceremony happens. That's what's funny is they announced three coaches that are elected to the, to the Hall of Fame, and, and I'm sure I'll say this and y'all go, oh, Drew, you're crazy. But you've got Jimmy Johnson, who I can totally understand why he's in the Hall of Fame, You've yeah, got Phil Fulmer, which once again I agree with, and then R.C. Slocum, which I, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, his credentials, are, is he up there with is those he, guys? Is that just from his time at Texas A&M? Is that that's where he's That's all I remember from? Him from. I don't know. I mean, you, you talk about him and I'll, I'll uh, talk, talk about R.C. Slocum. Slocum? Yeah. <laughs> okay, do you talk about R.C. Slocum? Uh, right-handed or left-handed? I'm going to say he's right-handed. I'm going with the percentages. But what, do you, what, do you think, what do you think R.C. stands for? Uh Richard Chet. <laughs> Richard <laughs> Copeland Slocum. So you got one out of two. That's a good guess. But no, I, on, the, on the Fulmer side, you know, I was talking to Drew Shane a couple of days ago, and, and at the time, I guess it was 08 when the coaching change was made. Is that true, Drew? Drew? Correct. 2008. I mean, I, I was ready for something different. I mean, I, I thought he had lost it, and I, and I thought the Tennessee program was – heading in the direction they didn't need to head in. But now, don't you think most Tennessee fans felt that way, too? I think so. I think even the diehard, you know, loyalists, and, uh, you know, they, they got to where I think they just – they hated to say it, but I think they felt it was time to, to make a move. And standing where we are right now, I, I told you the other day, if, if, if we could go back, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd take Fulmer. I'd, I'd, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have made the move. Now, I also said this. I feel like, cheater or not a cheater, if Lane Kiffin, if the USC job doesn't open up and Lane Kiffin's still at Tennessee, I think Tennessee's a top 15 program right now. I think he, if nothing else, he's a, you know, could be a low-life cheater, but he, he would have uh, players there. You know, I think they were on the way to doing something. But You don't think there would be sanctions at Tennessee in the football program as well by this time if he was still there? Not really. I mean, I, I, mean, I, maybe, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe something similar to what USC's having. But, you know, they're, they're, they're they got their stuff really man out of the way last year. They're really, I mean, they got their stuff from Pete Carroll's regime, right? Correct. But, I, I mean, wasn't Kiffin under review from the NCAA? Weren't they investigating him? And, and basically because he wasn't at UT, I mean, you guys got off pretty light as far as some of the sanctions. You lost some scholarships, right? I think when no, Pearl. Was no scholarship loss for, for football. It, it was a situation when Tennessee went. it was self. When Tennessee went before the Board of Infractions with the Bruce Pearl situation. There was also football questions that that had to be answered. Uh, Lane Kiffin had to, you know, he was a head coach at USC at the time and still had to go to those hearings and, and speak for himself. And Tennessee's football program did not receive any other uh, sanctions placed upon it. But I, I do think 
I'd, I'd have, have to agree, Shane, a lot of that was probably the fact that it was all stuff that Kiffin had done, and he was gone, so right. they weren't going to penalize the school. But I just think, you know, Phil Fulmer, when you when you just I mean, so, so with that being said, though, I mean, if you had, to, had it to do over again and Kiffin was still here, well, that, that would have meant that you would have had to change the Pearl situation as well. And so you could have been in a whole heap of a mess as opposed to the Dewey situation. Yeah, I don't I guess my point is going back. You just want to win. No doubt, but I'm saying if Ful, if Fulmer's still the coach, I mean, I, I'm I'm not going to spend 45 minutes breaking him down, but I mean, people, I mean, Fulmer had a lot of uh, negative stuff coming his way. I mean, people made fun of his weight. People made fun of, you know, working like heck. I mean, how many times did he, you know people make fun of that comment that he made? But the guy won games. I mean, Tennessee in in the in the years he was there, I think he was here 16 or 17 years. Uh, they had nine years of ten wins uh, or more in the season. You know, he won the SEC seven times. Um, obviously brought the only national championship to Tennessee in the last, you know, 60 years. So, you know, whether he was dropping off or not, I mean, he was 152 and 52 overall. And that's, that's, I mean, that's a, you know, what's that, maybe not quite 75% winning percentage. And, yeah, I mean, look, it's easy to say it now. I, I He had a couple bad years that – uh, you know, that really got him in hot water and got him fired. But, I mean, look, I, you know, it's just hard to say. I mean, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd like to see it, just have some machine I could say, okay, well, where would we be right now if, if A, Fulmer had never been fired? B, where would we be if, if Lane Kiffin was still here? Uh, and then obviously we know what C is, and that's, you know, Derek Dooley and, and his job. We could be in for another coaching change next year if, uh, if, if he doesn't have a good season coming up. Now let me ask you this. Would you guys want uh, the old Arkansas head, head ball coach, the motorcycle driving, fun-loving, Woman volleyball-loving coach that he is? He has good taste in women, it appears. <laughs> but, no, I, I think he's – is he a better coach than Derek Dooley? I'd have to say yes. I mean, I, I would take him. I, I'm, I'm still just. But you don't sound excited about that option. Yeah, I mean, I'll be fine with it. I, I'm still, I, I, you know, you know me, Shane. I'm going to be optimistic. I don't think Derek Dooley's going anywhere. At least next year, I think they're going to be much improved. If you ask me how many games I think they're going to win, I'm going to say nine or ten, which is, is. <laughs> I mean, it might be high, but I mean, I really truly believe that they, they should win. You know, nine of their games next year. What, or, what if they go six and six? Seven and five. He's gone. <laughs> yes. No. I, I say he's gone. Um, seven and five. I don't think he's gone. Six and six. It depends on how they how they finish the season. So, I, I don't know. I, I'm just once again. I the hard part is you want to look at this and one. You're exactly right. All right, Fulmer leaves. You have Kiffin come in and Kiffin. What did they go? Five and seven the first year. They didn't make a bowl. No, game. he only played one year and they went yeah. to a bowl. Kiffin. They're, they were seven and five. Went to the uh, Chick Fil A. That's right. Bowl. That's right. They're seven and five. Seven got, and five. Got drilled by by Virginia, Virginia Tech. Tech. That's right. Seven and five. So then he leaves, and you've got Dooley, who's who's now coming into a program where they've had two coaching changes. Uh, pretty much everybody that that Kiffin brought in. I mean, it's just total turnover. You know, losing you know losing a lot of players, losing Eric Berry. So he comes in and he goes six and seven in that. With, and, with and two yes, and should have been should have been eight and five. So. In my opinion, I know that you can't view that. I mean, and and yes, it's Tennessee's fault that they had too many players on the field against North Car- or, uh, against LSU. And yes, the rules were correct. They probably got that game correct by the rules in the North Carolina uh, game in the Music City Bowl, which they've changed now. By the way, they've changed those those rules. But I mean, that could have easily been an eight and five season. And then this last year, I mean, that's just a tough schedule to have. Plus, you lose Justin Hunter, and you lose Tyler Bray, and you lose Jansen Jackson, and you lose Herman Lathers. I mean, you're losing four of your top maybe six players. So, I mean, I just – I can't say at this point that Derek Dooley's had enough time. Uh, on the radio, they always talk about, oh, he's recruiting horribly. And they're finishing, like, in the top 20. I just – I think if you finish – even at Tennessee, if you're finishing in the top 25 in recruiting, I think you can win. I think you can go to BCS Bowls. I think you can be fine. Everybody can't be Alabama um, and LSU, and, and, and I'm okay with that. I, I, I don't expect Tennessee to go from – hiring two new coaches in the last three years to win a national championship. What I do expect this year, yes, if they don't make a bowl game and they don't have just massive injuries like they had last year, then, yeah, I think I think he should be on the hot seat. And if they fire him, then I, I think he's deserved that firing. So, 
I, I but think, I'm not ready to get rid of them right now, not at all. I think we're Tennessee fans. I know I did. Where, where our, our, our thoughts about this program change was, you know, Johnny Major's run from – what he, he started – I think it was maybe – I want to say 1986, somewhere in there, where um, they had just went to the Sugar Bowl um, and beat Miami in a in a really you know one of the biggest wins in Tennessee history, the '85 season. Um, and I can't remember if it, for some reason I can't remember if it was '86 or maybe '88, one of those two years. But they started off 0 and 6. Um, yeah, '88. Start off 0 and 6. Well, they they come back and win their last five games in 1988. And then from 1989 on, I mean, until the Fulmer and Majors kind of deal, for those next four years, Tennessee was a very good, you know, top 20 football team, not a top. Well, then, you know, the transition gets made to Fulmer when, when Majors came back from that heart surgery, lost three games in a row in the SEC. That's when they decided to make that change. And from from the time, you know, about 94, 95, uh, I guess it was Manning's second season, would have been 95, I mean, Tennessee moved from being a top 20 program to a top five program for about a four or five year, you know, stretch that culminated with that 1988 championship. Then even in 99, I mean, Tennessee was, you know, one game away against Arkansas on the road from, from really being in the top two and a chance to play for it again. In 2001, uh, they, they lost huge game. upset against at Florida uh, late in the season when they had that the 9-11 game that got moved. Tennessee was like an 18-point underdog, had a huge win. Then they – just choke that game away against LSU. If they win that game, they're in the national championship. So Tennessee had about a six-year run where now we're not okay with, with top 20, 25 seasons. We're a top five program. Well, then it fell back, and you know, that's Tennessee's ha- – you know, for the last 10 years, you know, now it's to the point where – how long, I don't know the last time we've been ranked. You know, it's been obviously, you know, two, three years. I don't know if we're ever ranked when Kiffin was there. So See, that's the problem. Uh, and, and it, and it just works expectations. In, it works in expectations anything. Expectations got uh, way, way too high. I mean, if, you, if you're if you making, you know, $50,000 a year and you're completely okay with that and then you start making $100,000 a year and then you go back to 40000 you don't want to just get back to making 50000 You want to get back to making $100,000 right. a year. It, you know, and, and I was talking to a buddy of mine we were playing fantasy baseball and it's it's all the whole thing of – when you've got a guy that's playing well, hey, I'm not trading you this guy. Well, I would ever trade you this guy. He's doing awesome. But then when he has two weeks where he's doing bad, now you want to trade him. I mean, it's it's so hard to – when things are going good, you can't imagine them being bad. And when things are bad, you you know, you, you can't imagine them ever being good again. It's just – it's one of those psychological things. That's why I say – and I'm, I'm definitely not a rational fan at all. I'm probably the most irrational fan <laughs> of all time. But – but that, that's why I say, I mean, you got to look at the circumstances that are out of your control. And and I, I don't care if – I mean, I don't know that there's any coach in the world that could have come in. And, and I mean, what what coach would have would have won uh, – with the team Tennessee had last year, what coach would have won eight games, nine games? Saban? Would Saban have won nine games with Tennessee last year? No, there's no way with those players he had. Yeah, I don't know. I, I know Shane probably want to talk about the state of Tennessee football for the entire time. But I just don't – if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna really be competitive, that's that's the thing. Is I, I don't think it's too much to ask that Tennessee is competitive with Alabama. That they're competitive with LSU. Last year it was, yes. They okay. Well, then we, we should have gone to OVC. I mean, that, that was just embarrassing. Those games. That was well, how many? Okay, how many Tennessee players got drafted in the NFL draft? No, this I'm last? not. I'm not saying that. That I'm just saying. That, but how many back Georgia to what we talked about? Georgia only had one as well. Well, I mean, what did Georgia do? Did they, Georgia they won ten games in a row last year. Yeah, I mean, did they? How they do against Alabama? Did they play them? I they didn't they, play them. <laughs> <laughs> they they did lost not the, lose to lost Alabama LSU last year in the championship game. But no, I mean, it's just what you said. I mean, you, you're, I'm not used to losing forty to nothing against Alabama. I'm not used to losing, you know. 38 to but here's, 6. Here's a logical – you're a logical guy. I mean, what would you say one of the big problems with Tennessee's football team? Would you say instability with the program has been pretty bad the last few years? Yeah, they haven't been Firing used to a that coach, at all. I mean, is that going to – I mean, how, how does that bring stability to the program? But keeping a bad coach, if he is a bad – I don't know if he's a good coach, though. I mean, what do, what do we know about Derek Dooley other than he's – we talked about James Franklin being a losing record coach. I mean, Derek Dooley's 28 and 34 as a head coach. And that's all we really know. He doesn't excite you as a fan base. He doesn't really – I don't know. I, mean, I he's kind of funny on the radio sometimes, but I just don't really know. You know, 
I, I gotta feel like the, is there not some is there not a bigger name here's, better here's, name out here's there? Here's the bottom line: if, if Dave Dooley? Hart if Dave Hart fires Derek Dooley and he and he doesn't know for a fact that a guy's gonna take you know he's gonna hire a four or five million dollar coach, then I'm gonna burn the damn just uh, Knoxville down. Oh, I agree. If if they fire Derek Dooley and, and, and bring, bring in Kirby a, Smart, I mean, I, yeah. what is Kirby Smart? He's 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 what has he done? He's been a defensive coordinator at a good school. Just like oh, they better bring in friggin' uh, like I don't know Pete Carroll. John Gruden, or like we talked about last time, Bill Cowher, here he comes. Yeah. I mean, Isn't that bad? That's coming. what you think. You're, we're sitting here hoping for Bill Bill Cowher and, and John Gruden, and, and it's really down between uh, you know Troy Calhoun and Derek Dooley. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the subject and, and go back and rewind just a little bit and go back to that sporting news. Um, and, and I don't know the, the national ranks, but they had, if you just look at the SEC – uh, they had Nick Saban, of course, number one. Agree. Les Miles, number two. Steve Spurrier, number three. Now, I'm going to make the case In that the country? In the SEC. Oh, okay. Just rank okay. it. I think, I think overall he was eighth. I, I can go back and try to find that uh, sporting news thing. But I think Spurrier was eighth and Miles was three or four in the country in all coaches. But looking at just the SEC, do you think that – and the, the, here's my question is, what are they taking into account for this to, to come up with this? Because if you want to look at Spurrier's body of work, wouldn't you think that that's probably a little better than Les Miles's and possibly just as good as Nick Saban's? Yeah, I, I, they've got to be, I would think, just it's current. saying, hey, right now, here's who we think are the best coaches in college football. Sure, I mean, if you give me 1993 Spurrier, I'll take him 100 times over Les Miles. But in terms of what what's Les Miles doing right now compared to what Spurrier's doing right now, I think that's, in my opinion, probably what they're looking at. But, I mean, but that's, we we could come up with a list and it, it could be totally different. Yeah, I mean, it's all you know kind of subjected to what we're looking at. And my thoughts are, I mean, l- given some of the challenges that Spurrier had last year uh, and the talent that he had compared to LSU, I think he did a better coaching job than Les Miles. I mean, because let's face it, it, LSU was not lacking in the talent department. Um, what we thought might be a controversy was never a controversy with Jefferson in the quarterback situation. Uh, you know, Spurrier had the head case Garcia that he had to deal with it. F- basically, the first half of the season, he had to he had to learn a new offense when he put in Connor Shaw uh, to learn how to call a whole different offensive set for Connor Shaw versus Garcia. Uh, he had his star running back go out in what what week week three or four. Lattimore. Yeah, Lattimore, when did he go out? He went out pretty early. Season, maybe. Yeah. I'll, I'll give Spurrier this, what I think is, is – And he won 11 good, games. Sure, what I think is a very good compliment. You know, when Tennessee plays Alabama last year or the last couple of years, I mean, I know Saban's their coach, but I, I'm scared of Alabama. I'm scared of their players. I, I'm not necessarily focused on, oh, I just we can't beat Nick Saban. I just look across and see, look at these players who can't – when when Tennessee was really good in the mid '90s, but Florida was really good as well, there was no coach that I dreaded, you know, having to play against more than Spurrier, just because of the. I mean, I can just remember that that game uh, in Knoxville, the, the first possession Florida has. It's fourth and ten on Tennessee's forty. You know, ninety nine percent of the coaches right there. Even though sometimes we go, I wish they'd go for it here, but they try to you know, pooch kick or punt. I mean, Spurrier never even hesitates. He just goes for it on fourth and ten, th- you know, throws a like a post pattern in the end zone, easy touchdown. Florida's up 7 nothing. Next thing you know, it's 35 nothing. Florida. You know, that's at, in Knoxville. Um, you know, he was one of the few coaches, and I'm not, I'm not sure I feel the same way now, but it's probably because the talent at South Carolina that he has is not like it quite was in Florida. I mean, I was just scared of what he's going to do and out-coach, you know, the team I'm, I'm pulling for. So, um you know, it, it's hard to say. I, th- I think Steve Spurrier it, it w- was a tremendous coach and still is. But, you know, I don't have the same thought about him probably now as I did 15 years ago. I think you got to look at the situation they're in, too. If, if Spurrier was a coach of LSU, I think he'd be ranked higher than Les Miles. I think part of that, that, that stat is it, it's, it's a big indicator, exactly what you were saying, Brett, is the team that you've got. So – I mean, I don't disagree with that. I, the only thing I would I would be willing to say that I can't say that right now I'd rank Spurrier higher than Mark Rick. And I know Mark Rick was on the hot seat, but I don't guess I don't get that. I know he's kind of disappointed sometimes when he's had super high expectations, but Rick's been a pretty solid coach. I mean, he'll be one when if 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 they fire him, I won't be disappointed. You know, I'll be happy as a as a Tennessee fan 
that Georgia's gotten rid of him, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't totally disagree, but it's just funny. Like, you know, some coaches, I think, you know, what what do you really rank when you're ranking a coach? You know, I, I mean, like like if I said, give me your th- criteria of how you think this list came about. I mean, a lot of it, I guess, is recruiting. I would imagine. Know, is a bunch what kind of recruiter are you? You know, you know, do, are you a motivator? Do you, are you are you knowledgeable about your you know what what positions you got? I don't know. I just you know I, when I think Mark Richt, like I I guess I disagree with you. I I don't you know I I, I think I, I still think Spurrier would 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 rank above. But like you said, I mean, Les Miles up until last year, we just thought of as a goofball that that went for over his head trick plays. So. I don't know. It's it's just a it's one of those lists that we're talking about it, which is probably what they wanted to uh, to get to get to happen. But I think we could us three could put a list together in the next thirty minutes, and we could just throw it out there, and people could be talking about it as well. Well, I mean, all right, let's look at the last half of this list, and we talked about Dooley. Uh, do you think Hugh Freeze deserves to be above Dooley, Joker Phillips? I think one or two others. I saw Hugh Freeze coach in the movie The Blind Side, <laughs> and it was a joke, man. It was horrible yeah, he, coaching. He, he let women come down yeah, there and like, tell his players what to like, do. He's letting Sandra Bullock, you know, interrupt his practices, and Tim McGraw. He's over there talking to Tim McGraw in the middle of practice, and and uh, and I, it, it's just it was a ridiculous. Can you imagine if effort. forty college coaches came to watch you practice, and your first thing is you're just kind of out there stretching. Then you get the entire team to get in a big circle, <laughs> and you have uh, your best player just try to you know run over the other one. So I just <laughs> thought that was, I mean that was one of the worst drills. You know, all right, we're gonna have just a big bull in the ring drill. Here we go. <laughs> you know, so I thought that was. So no, was based funny. on so, that, based I'd say on the, Hugh Freeze will be dead last. That is here's what's unbelievable is that is the only Hugh Freeze tape I've ever seen. So I don't know anything else about him besides the Blind Side. I'll say this about Hugh Freeze: is you ever like you hear somebody talk. Uh, give you an example like Seth Everett that talks on uh, 104.5, the baseball guy. And you hear him – I've heard him talk for three years. I've never seen a picture of him. I saw a picture of him like – I followed him on Twitter like last week, and it, I just – it's like I can't even look at him the same anymore because it, it looks nothing like what I thought he would look like. It looks like uh, Kevin seen, Ingram. I've seen a picture of Hugh Freeze uh, here recently when he got hired. I, I don't know why. I don't know anything about him. Other than he just you know had this crazy wide-open offense, and I had in my mind what he would look like. and He doesn't look anything like that guy. So – I don't know if that is totally out of left field or if that makes sense to, you know, kind of what I'm talking about, but kind of funny. And we're showing yeah. pictures of Seth, Seth Everett. Everett. Seth Everett. <laughs> looks, doesn't look like he, he sounds in my opinion. No. Seth Everett also made fun of, did you make fun of David Beauclair this morning? Uh, no, what did he say? <laughs> he didn't know uh, Beauclair, who I like just because, long story short, he, you know, four or five years ago was a high school volleyball reporter for the DNJ, and now he's, you know, he's on 104.5 a couple of days a week and, you know, covers the Predators for uh, the city paper. And uh, so he I, – I think his mistake was this morning he's on with, with uh, Ingram and Mark Howard. And instead of saying, you know, hey, Seth, this is David Beauclair of the city paper, he just started talking. And, <laughs> and Seth Everett said, he goes, Kevin, did you uh, – uh, did you suck on a helium balloon right there? Because <laughs> Beauclair's got a little bit of a high-pitched voice and it was just some, kind of an awkward moment but a, but a funny one too, so – there's your Seth Everett, David Beauclair story for the week. <laughs> there you go. Well, what other <laughs> what other topics we got? Because I mean, because people in you know Alabama listening this know exactly who 104.5 the zone. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry guys. Alabama yeah. is still very good at football. They're going to win the national championship again. So that's for our Alabama people. And, and your baseball team's worse than Tennessee's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but your football coach. What is we talk about Florida. Florida continuously has players keep getting arrested. That's nice. Fill me in. I didn't hear this. I I just saw some of the defensive end got got arrested. But was he eating pot brownies from uh, Rambo? <laughs> I think he was. <laughs> Whatever became of that? Murdering people. Did he get suspended or? <laughs> was that we, the kid from Georgia? Yeah. Wasn't, uh, it, wasn't it Rambo? Wasn't that his name? Yeah, Bakari. Yeah. I think. I don't. I, I couldn't tell you what happened. I know he just. Said the reason was he was eating brownies at a frat party or yeah. a beach yeah. party. On spring or break. Who eats pot brownies, man? <laughs> I just don't get that. Is that just? I just can't imagine that that these football players are. You know, I mean, if you just close your eyes and imagine, what are you, are you seeing them smoking a, a blunt, or are you seeing them just passing around a pot brownie? I'm definitely seeing the 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 former. But you know, if, if I'm out having a few beers and I walk a I walk up and see a plate of brownies, I'm going to partake, and whether I know they're pot brownies or not, so. I could see where that mistake could happen. 
But let's face it, if he's going to test positive, I doubt it was the pot brownies that did it. Unless he ate about, you know, surely you have to eat four or five pot brownies to, to test. I mean, I guess there's much pots in the brownies. I guess so. <laughs> there's that. Um, <coughs> Arkansas had a, a player, I don't know if he kicked off, I think a wide receiver was stealing from uh, his teammate. That's always good. I think that's just a – that's pretty bad. When Team morale's high there, isn't yeah, when it? When you're stealing from your, your teammates. That's if you're ten, steal, one of Tennessee's recruits. See, Tennessee's recruit when he was on his – Georgia. Yes, he, was, he wasn't a part <laughs> of the team yet, so that's okay. He's just stealing from his enemy at this point. <laughs> Oh man, that is pretty bad. You go. I know we've talked about this on past shows before, but you're going on a recruiting visit. I mean, who just does this? You know, hey, you know, George is welcoming to their uh, to their football facility. I'm by myself. I'm still me a couple of iPods. <laughs> Let me here. cut through some lockers here. <laughs> yeah, like you're not going to get caught. You just put them in your pocket, I guess. You, know, you got, you got seven iPods. iPods in your pocket. You're going to. And he goes to the airport, and the, the metal detector's going off. How these iPods get in my pocket? Hey, Deanna, you know, you seem to have quite a few iPods. You like music? Craziness. Do you like Elton John and <laughs> Tim McGraw? Still like the kickers, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Celine Dion on there or something. Speaking of football, I just happened to flip on uh, last night, late before I was going to bed, the Water Boy. I mean, I hadn't seen it in a while. <laughs> those were some hellacious hits that Bobby Boucher was putting on those guys. And one thing that made me laugh, and I know I noticed this before, but. You remember the scores that his team were winning by when what they started like two going two to nothing or something? Yeah, they they won like five to nothing one game. They beat somebody, you know, like seven to They had the kicker who uh, visualized the uh, KKK guy's heads when he kicked the ball. And they they had talk about bad football coaches. I mean the Fonz, you know, Henry Winkler coaching uh, he, was, okay. he was good at drawing up plays if you remember. If you remember uh, uh was it not Gary Reed? <laughs> Jim, uh, what was the Reed? Uh, G- Gary Reed's our uncle. So Jim Pro- Reed, the, the singer the, who was in the Smokey the Bandit. Jerry and the Jerry, 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 the Jerry and the Bandit. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Reed. Bandit. Jerry Reed is the God, head coach God rest his of, soul. The, of the other team, and only reason he's good is because he stole Henry Winkler's playbook back. You know when they were both assistant coaches like twenty years ago, and Henry Winkler was so scared of him. I've, and literally during the game, they're in the Bourbon Bowl, uh, in the f- final game there, and. If you remember, uh, isn't that UT Kentucky? Isn't that the Bourbon I, Bowl? I think the Beer Barrel or whatever that they play for, don't they? Yeah. But, but anyway, I mean, you just see here they are in the, the a New Year. They're on a New Year's Day Bowl. Do you remember the Brent Musburger and Dan Fouts are announcing it? Yeah. And and he's just leaving. I mean, he, it's the middle of the game and he's walking off because he's scared. I mean, and the only reason. And this know, is the Fonz you're referring yes, to. Yes. And it yeah. was just he was one of the worst coaches I've ever seen. Uh, but I did want to say that Bobby Boucher had some of the best tackles and hits I've ever seen. Uh, on any football field. All right, and I got I got three guys. I want you to tell me uh, what what star ranking they'd have if they were being recruited. We got Bobby Boucher, middle linebacker. Uh, you know Boucher, he's he's undersized. You know he's probably <laughs> five ten, about two hundred pounds. It'd be tough linebacker. to get him in schools. Yeah, Ole Miss could probably get him. He around. literally, I don't know <laughs> what kind of grades he would make, but. <laughs> Um, you, know, he, you have to have a alligator is honor because I got all them <laughs> teeth and no toothbrush. But I mean, he's a hellacious hitter. You know, I, I'd say he'd probably be a, a more of a three star. Probably about type a five zero uh, forty. Yeah, he's not particularly well, fast. He did, he did take a just a team that was awful, just I mean, horrible, to a New Year's Day bowl yeah. single handedly. So I believe he's got to be a five star just based on that. <laughs> if you can get him in school, and their defensive coordinator was the best Cajun accent of all time. <laughs> <laughs> he wore, uh, over, he wore overalls on the sideline. Farmer <laughs> friend. <laughs> all right. Um, I go three star for Boucher. All right. Uh, now you got to remember. Let's just suppose the wreck doesn't happen. He's not paralyzed. This is a real, a real person. So I kind of feel bad saying this, but Gary Bertier of the uh, of the Titans. Remember the Titans? Uh, white defense or I he, was a, he was a linebacker. A linebacker as well. as well. Pretty good. Pretty good player. Shane, did you see the movie? No, you You've never, never seen remember the Titans. The Titans? No, that That's is awesome. unbelievable. First of all, all right, we're gonna I, I'm we're gonna, gonna give put it on TV right here, and you have to watch it for the, during the podcast. I just feel like Bertier, uh, he'd have been way too slow. Yeah. Uh, just you know, he had a good attitude. He put the team first. Julius probably a little higher. Julius ranked. much higher ranked, but he actually played in college. I don't know Bertier probably. Uh, you know, I'll give him a two star just because he did have a good attitude. All right, another guy that uh, had his season cut short by injury. Uh, star quarterback for the West Canaan Coyotes, Lance Harbor. Is he the guy that was he's, he's the quarterback a, before yes, Lake uh, Dawson's before, Creek? Uh, whatever. Was that his, Varsity Blues? Yeah, Vanderbeek. Yeah, yeah Vanderbeek, which is, his name was Moxon, Jonathan Moxon. Lance yeah. Harbor, 
pretty good quarterback. Did they ever really show any action with him? Oh, no, he's he just good, man. laying in the center of the lane and going to the strip club, watching that, his teacher dance. <laughs> you're, you're laying in the center lane, you're mixing up the program. Yeah, I think with, I am with that. Yeah. But uh, but he did watch his teacher dance I, at a strip club. I didn't. Club. I didn't see enough of Lance Harbor to, to <laughs> Have really. Have you seen know. Varsity Blues? You seen that movie, Shane? Yeah, but like he said, they didn't show a lot of that. Let's go to the quarterback on. Uh, the Dylan Panthers instead. Which one? Uh, the, the one that J- got hurt. Jason Street. Yeah. Well, Jason Street was a uh, was a uh, he was being recruited Highly by talented, a lot of yeah. places. They talked about him being the number one quarterback. I but gotta believe he's a five star. I mean, he was about five foot eight. So I was about to say though, he, yeah, he wasn't real tall. I'm gonna this, this is Friday Night Lights. Right, I'll, I'll, y'all can yell at me. I've never seen one episode. It's a very good episode. I've Do actually, you have Netflix? No. I've rewatched the first. I pay two hundred fifty dollars for Comcast, and I don't think I watch but four channels. So. <laughs> you watch nothing but like America's Got Talent over and over again. I haven't seen that yet, but Howard Stern is Duck Dynasty. Judge. People talk about that at school. I've yet to it's, see that. It's good. it's good. Do you watch it? I, I saw it for the first time last night. I enjoy it. it. It's it's a little scripted, which I know a lot of those shows are, but I didn't. I don't like it as much as like like Gold Rush. Did you ever watch Gold Rush? I haven't seen Gold Rush. Gold Rush is good. Where they go panning for gold. It's it's one of the only, you know you know a show is good when you're watching it and you're thinking you know I really think I might you know head up to the Klondike and get my pan out and see if I can give me some gold. You didn't feel like nothing like the moonshining show that was on. Was that? I saw a little bit of that, but I don't I don't understand those shows like the moonshining and and like drug wars and stuff like that because you're not allowed to moonshine. I don't understand how you can have it on TV. You know. It's got to be fake when when it's on TV, and it's it illegal. just seems like seems like the it's kind of the same. I'm gonna kind of go uh, way off subject here, but we're talking about moonshine and show, so <laughs> this isn't too far off. Dukes of Hazard. Why would the cops? <laughs> not, why would the cops not just go? Uh, hey, uh, hey, television criminal, follow you up to the, to this guy's house today. You yeah. know, or it's it's same with like uh, Osama bin Laden. I just give the cameraman a gun and should have shot him years ago when he was performing when he was doing his propaganda tape. Yeah, but the cameraman was. His own guy it wasn't well, like we somehow got that video well, tape. Yeah, they sent it. So we could have infiltrated that. Well, that was broadcasted on something called the internet. <laughs> Is that what uh, Al Gore? Right, my, my last rated? quick, since we're on the goofball stuff here. Uh, yeah, because I don't think we have any other sports to talk not. about. Movie quarterbacks. All right, rank these three. You got uh, Keanu Reeves in the replacements. Shane Falco. Shane Falco. Uh, right-handed, left-handed. I think he was lefty. He was lefty. And I, I'm gonna stop real Where did quick. Where he play? He played, you, was it against UCLA that he he blew the game in college? Hold on, real quick. Let me make an interjection here for all those that are still listening to this podcast. <laughs> please please check out our Facebook page. I'm gonna put this poll up, and we'd love to see what you guys think about this. So we're gonna see what what you think about the the best TV quarterback. So so continue continue and, the conversation. And if I'm if I'm leaving some out, um, he was number seven. All right. Well, <laughs> I think no, I think he's higher. I think double digits. Yeah, could be. Sixteen, I think. Um, then you had uh, was he left or right handed? Yeah, Dennis lefty. Quaid, the older guy. What, what was his name? Cap in a uh, um, any given Sunday. Yeah. And then probably by far the most athletic, uh, you know, his backup who eventually took his spot, Jamie Foxx's character, uh, Willie Beeman. Willie Steeman, Willie Beeman, uh, in and also in any given Sunday, which I've watched. Two or three times after I originally thought it was a trash movie, it's a great. It, movie. It's pretty good. I mean, the the, the, the speech, scene, yeah, in the locker room by. It's about um, the six inches in front of your nose. Yeah, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand that. You just talk like uh, the Georgia announcer right there. That wasn't really <laughs> that Pacino. What uh, about Bur- uh, Burt Reynolds in? Uh, oh, uh, you got Reynolds or Adam Sandler in um, uh, the Mean Machine, uh, the Longest Yard, Longest uh, Yard, Paul uh, Crew. Yeah, you Paul go. Crew. So you can go him. Paul Crew and, and that – Burt Reynolds actually played college football, did he not? He played Florida, Florida State. State. So. Like a defensive lineman, I think. But th- those were, uh, you know, those were some, some guys I thought of. I, I I would take Willie Beeman. He was ridiculously – I mean, he was – he had you know, he was a – you know, it was a head case at times, but, you know, some of the athletic plays he made, uh, you know, good arm for sure. I, I, I wouldn't take – Shane Falco or anything, but unless he's you know dodging bullets in slow motion, it depends. Uh, man, I, I I watched some of that movie again the other day. That's a good movie. Which one? The Matrix, man. I really yeah. like that. I, I thought it was. Here's what's bad is you got you got Keanu Reeves, horrible, horrible actor. Yet he's chosen all these great. I mean, every movie I feel like is just right up his alley. You know, he's he's playing just kind of like an airheaded guy or that kind of aloof character. And you got Paul Walker, who's once again just an idiot as well. And I hate every one of his movies. 
So, but back to your point, Shane yeah. Falco, I think would would be good if he need if you need to get a team of misfits together. You know, you bring in Falco. You need to get a team of cons together. You're going to bring in Paul Crew. You need to get a you know. Right. I guess you can also add Lawrence uh, Taylor and Emma what Smith. was the guy? Is it Scott Bakula? <laughs> Scott <laughs> Scott Leap, Bakula and he was and on Necessary, Necessary Roughness, roughness uh, and his name in that movie I can't remember his name. <laughs> uh, it might come to Do me. You remember the kicker in Necessary Roughness? It was a female. Was it, it, no? Kathy Ireland. Kathy Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> you also right. had Sinbad on the line. <laughs> you had a samurai playing defense, <laughs> kicking people. So <laughs> some good quality quarterbacks out there for y'all to think about. So we'll uh, I like that idea, Shane. Scott we'll get that Bakula. up on the on the website and. See if we can get a few votes yeah. on the best. I got. I got almost. Most I have to agree. Quarterback. I, I'd probably take. I'd Cap probably was, take Willie. Cap was pretty good. Yeah, he's old. But I mean, he, for that case, I mean Paul Crew. I mean that's until his life was derailed by his his binge drinking. He's an All Pro quarterback, I believe. Well, and here's another sad. St- I've I've never seen either longest yard, the the original or the the new one. So that is I can't believe, sad. Can't vote on that one. So if it's a football related show that's on TV these days, you don't watch it. I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, Longest Yard, classic. Yeah, I haven't. I just haven't seen Friday it. Night Lights. No, that's, that's more of a, a good, TV show, good right? TV show. Just, not, not, yeah, we Hold can't on, get away from yeah, the fact you don't know, remember the title. Yeah, yeah I, that's a movie I've seen nine thousand times. You've never. You've seen You've had it. to avoid it intentionally. Yes. I do. I, I do not like Denzel Washington. He gets oh, wow. on my nerves. Okay. Not nothing against. Yeah. But he just. I don't like That's mo- weird. Most of his roles, I choose not to watch his shows. You could probably name a dozen Denzel Washington movies, and I haven't watched Crimson them. Tide. Yes, but wasn't Sean Connery in that? No, that was a Hunt, Hunt for, for October. October. Oh, <laughs> yeah, one of those other submarine movies. That was, that was a Crimson Tide. Was Gene good. Hackman? Gene Hackman. Yeah. Um, what about, about Training Day? Training Day, great nope. movie. Good movie. Uh, let's see. see. That's funny because I think Denzel Man on Fire Boston is very good. Yeah, teach his own. Yeah, teach his own. Everybody thinks he's a great actor, and, and I, just, I don't know. Something about his performances is like, I don't know, seem a little over the top for me, and I just don't watch many of his movies. So, Brett, didn't you say you you had a Sports Illustrated uh, one time where they talked about, like, what would the salary be for these fictitious baseball players? And it was like Roy Hobbs, and then the best case ever was Steve Nebraska from the Scout, yes. who in his first Major League appearance – he pitched in game one of the World Series. Through a perfect game. Through 81 pitches, all strikes, and hit like a home, home run. Yes. Uh, which the game was at Yankee Stadium, so he was foregoing the DH that he would have been allotted to use, and he <laughs> drove in the run <laughs> and threw 81 pitches, all strikes. All strikes. That's efficient right there. And the last pitch he threw, and remember, it knocked the catcher down and the backwards into the umpire. Flipped like three times. Goes, strike. strike? <laughs> so... No, I, I yeah that was. I don't a, care where that ball is. If you throw an eighty straight, the next one could be you know could bounce three times there. If I'm the umpire, I'm ringing them up. Right. Now that was a, I can't remember the exact article, but yes, they were they were given fictitious movie characters what their like salary cap, uh, you know what 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 their s- a contract. Steve Nebraska know, would, be would be a fifty million dollar a year player. Correct. <laughs> You'd have to be, wouldn't you? Yeah, I thought that was one of the, the just. Talk about a guy that wasn't the right person, the role. I mean, Brendan Fraser as an athlete. That's was like, yeah. When, when you think about, like, I always thought that that Kevin Costner, George of the Jungle, isn't that a athletic <laughs> yeah. type performance? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. You talked about Denzel. I'm not a big Brendan Fraser fan. You didn't so. like Bedazzled? You're uh, crazy if you didn't like I don't that. Know if I saw it, you could watch. Uh, I, I saw the one where he Elizabeth goes. Hurley. He lives underneath with Christopher Walken. Uh, that's a good movie. It's actually pretty decent. Yeah, that's a good movie. Uh, Alicia Is that Alicia Silverstone? Silverstone? Looking, yeah, looking pretty yeah. good in it. I can't so, remember the name of that one. Um, Blast from the Blast Past. Blast from the Past. There you go, Shane. Yeah. Doc we, walks into a bar. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Well, it looks like we've had our open mic night for about 20, uh, 20 minutes. Anything else we want to talk about before we close up? Ben, tell them where we can find you, and we'll wrap this thing up. Brett, you want to kick us off? Sure, I will. Um, I'm on Twitter, uh, at Big B Young. Um, Still, still posting every now and then, and still, uh, like I said, just enjoying. Yelling it. at Chad Caldwell most of the time. A lot of times, being being uh, at Chad Caldwell twenty four, uh, good follow for Vandy fans. He'll retweet any and everything that you know James Franklin has done for the day. Or he generally gives a breakfast update too. He does. Yeah, he does. James Franklin had two eggs with Melba toast today. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can you can follow me there, and uh, like I said, Shane, I appreciate uh, having me back on, and uh, had a good time tonight, and hopefully I won't be 
15 episodes in between before I'm back again. We're glad that you're back. Drew, follow me at Drew Young 20 um, Still have some good stuff on there. Once again, R-rated, unlike this show. So uh, hide your kids. <laughs> hide your wife. You can bring your wife. I mean, she can handle it probably. <laughs> but uh, at Drew Young 20 I – I mean, I've got all kinds of stuff we could talk about, but I uh, haven't seen. saw The Hunger Games, which was good. I think that's the last movie I saw. We talked about seeing The Avengers, which I, I'm sure is a good movie. It just It's ridiculous that it's making as much money as it is. Two weeks for 100. Do you think think it's going to be a big drop-off this week in week three? What, how, what was it last weekend? 100, over $100 million for the first two it, weeks. It was the largest opening weekend ever for any movie. And then it was the first movie to ever gross over $100 million the second week. Right. I would have to think it's going to drop off. I mean, I, I don't know. But I, now, just, I mean, a little bit of that is skewed since so many theaters are showing it in 3D, and it's like $18 a person here in Nashville. I mean, you know, that's 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 a lot more than a $5.50 uh, matinee price to go see a, a film than that you had 10 years ago when – when Titan or twenty years ago was Titanic, right? I guess did they not adjust <laughs> those for <laughs> twenty years ago? <laughs> what, what anniversary was it? Uh, it was like nineteen ninety seven. Oh, it was the. It was like fifteen years. It was anniversary. the anniversary of, of the, the actual, actual Titanic. Titanic. Like, right. It was a hundred year anniversary or something. But yeah. it, it seems like they should adjust that for inflation or something. They do. They do some of the things in just for inflation because like Star Cause Wars is up. Yeah, there. movies used to Star Wars would have been you know four dollars to get in. So, but I think it's. I mean. When you see those numbers about as far as tar- top grossing, it's just by dollars. They don't take that into account. That's what's funny, though, is is movies are still, they keep going up and up and people going to do it. And I, I guess that's just the difference of, it, while it is expensive now, you can take your whole family to the movies and it's going to cost you, you know, 60 bucks or 70 bucks or something like that if you have two or three kids, yeah. I guess. But, I mean, like a sporting events, they're, they're attendance, it, everybody talks about how attendance is going down in a lot of places and... I guess that's the difference in you know a, a ten or a twelve dollar ticket and a fifty dollar ticket. So well, also though you got to look at a sporting event. I mean, you think of a football game. You can get you know four or five of your buddies over with with high definition television sets. The comfort, the comfort of your own home, your own beer. Uh, you don't have to worry about trying to get out of a parking lot. And you can have just as much fun sitting in in a living room with a bunch of buddies watching a football yeah, game. Yeah, and it's two hours at a movie versus a six-hour commitment at a ball game. Yeah, because you're going to have to tailgate beforehand for an hour or two and yeah, all the travel time. And you can't really sit, I mean, you've got great – everybody you know, has a great big TV now, but you still just can't beat that that experience of the movie theater, I guess. So Yeah, but you really can for the football to yeah. me. I mean, I, I, I've been in the suites. I've been in the lower bowls. I've been – I've not been in the upper sections. I I just refuse to have to walk that high up because I know never if, not been in the upper sections for those games. I know that if if it's if it's not any better in the suite or in the lower bowl, it couldn't be that much better up there. But the experience at home with a bunch of guys with some cold beer um, is just as good to me as as being there sometimes. So I can understand where some sporting events and like a baseball. I mean that's where you can really see it when I mean, you have eighty one home games. And that's that's all the huge investment. Same with hockey. How many home games are there? Forty. Forty one. I would yeah, guess it's eighty two like in the regular season. So forty one. So I mean, you know, those are that's a that's a lot of lot of time to take out of it, and you know, more power to those people that can invest in season tickets to those folks and and go on such a regular and consistent basis. But it's to me that's those are difficult uh, time commitments, and there's so many more things today that take up your time uh, that you had today that you didn't have 20 years ago so well you can find me at p shane bailey that's my twitter uh don't uh, i don't know how much exciting sports stuff i i tweet there i generally if it's something sports related i, I put it on the sec srt uh, twitter i'm more technology type stuff uh, social media things about nashville from from my personal but you're welcome to follow me love for you to, to check it out and see what's going on there And with all that, guys, we're going to call this podcast done.